Hi, I'm Dave White and welcome to my studio. I'm an illustrator and toy designer and I use 3D printing to make my toys. Uh, today we're going to do an unboxing of the new Affinia 800 Plus and I already have a couple of Affinias which I really love so that's why I went with this brand because I really trust it. I know that it's reliable and does a good job. These are uh, some of my toys. I call this a Mechanaut and it has about 70 parts all done in different colors, things like that. Now I use ABS plastic which can put off a lot of fumes and it can warp so one of the things that this is really great for is it has an enclosed space and HEPA filtration so it'll keep the parts straight and it'll improve the air quality in my studio. It also has a bigger platform so it can print larger parts, I can make jumbos or I could leave longer jobs to go overnight and it has Wi-Fi connectivity so I don't have to have it over by my other printers, I can have it next to my workstation or wherever I want, you know, it's very flexible for my studio layout. So I'm really excited to see what it can do and uh, let's take a look and see what's inside the box. You can kind of see this box is huge. I know the printer's a lot bigger than the others that I have. Mostly because of the, uh, the enclosure. Alright, let's see what's in the box. Right, it looks like it has uh, some directions on how to unpack everything, so take the stuff on top out first, which is the power cord. directions, and these all look like printing beds, that's cool. That's a lot bigger than my old printing bed. And they have perforated boards, and they have uh, just these sort of matte surface boards as well. Okay, here's the printer. Wow, this thing's really beautiful. Take off my ring so I don't scratch it up. So there's the printer. And uh, looks like this is a spool cover for when you put the plastic in. And that's everything that's in the box for now. So let's take a closer look at what we have. Okay, so I found the secret compartment. That wasn't all there was. Looks like we have a power supply and a couple of regular tools, some material for printing, and uh, some gloves, tools, and a USB cable for connecting it. And that is it. All right, so here's the printer, all unwrapped. It's uh, really nice looking. Has some buttons on the side. Looks like uh, power, print, and I think one of them is remove the uh, the printing material. There's a case on the side for you to put your printing material in your spools of ABS or, or PLA or whatever you have. And, uh, you know, it's still sort of all taped up inside from transport to keep things from slipping and moving. Um, but man, it's nice. It's really fancy. Has a dual fan cooling for the print head, I believe, which should really improve. Uh, print quality from my old ones. It's nice. So, you know, I wanted to point out that one of the differences between my review and a lot of the reviews you might see online is that I bought this printer with my own money. It wasn't given to me. And, you know, I see these guys do reviews and they have five, six, seven different kinds of printers. I don't know how they afford those. I'm a real working shop where I make product and I sell it. So, it's really important that I get a printer that not only does a good job, and it's cost effective, but also is easy to maintain. And I think, based on my past experience with Affinia, that this is really going to be like that. So uh, I'll get it hooked up, and uh, we'll see how it prints. So well, here we have the new printer. I have it plugged in and I've moved it over by my other printers so that I could um, connect it with the USB cable to first initialize it. You have to do that before you can set up the Wi-Fi. And I've done all that. I had to go through the directions and I had to download the software from the internet and get that installed on my computer. So you can kind of see that it's all up and running. This is my old Affinia 479 and it has an aftermarket enclosure. 
and then here's my 480, which I gave you a brief view of earlier. Uh, this is the um, spool enclosure that I mentioned, and it has this case on it. That it came with two, a thin one, so you could use the sort of not as thick spools, and then I have an octave ABS filament spool on there, and it needs this thicker thing. And it has a, a magnetic ring around it that locks it into place. It's kind of strange, but so far it's been working just fine. Uh, when I saw this unit in prototype phase at, uh, at uh, what was it called, um, Maker Faire in Queens a couple years ago, they actually had the material just sitting on a Lazy Susan next to it and sort of feeding in. So this is a much better solution than what I had previously seen. I don't think you got a good view at the top, but it has a really nice sort of uh, embossed logo on there. Here are the buttons that I mentioned on the side and it is really a pretty machine inside. It has this light panel that gives you different kind of status updates. Red, blue, green, and there's a series of lights you can see here. That also gives you an indication of how far along a print is. And in case you forget what any of that is, it has all the information here inside the hood and uh, you get a nice look down inside. And here you can see the twin fans I was mentioning. There's one on top, one on the side. Here's the diverter fan uh, switch that lets more airflow go across the print head. Adjusting that sort of makes it easier or more difficult to remove the, uh, the support material, but it also increases layer adhesion, so you have to be really careful with how you play with that. So, very nice. Here we can see the Affinia software. I downloaded this from their website connected the uh, printer with a USB cable and then set up the Wi-Fi. It was pretty simple. You just had to go up here into the options and the printer popped up once I had installed the drivers. At first it didn't show up, so that was pretty easy. I think if you're a Windows user, you're kind of used to having to do that sort of thing. So no problem. So once I got it set up on my Wi-Fi network, I could un unhook the USB cable and move the printer around anywhere I wanted. And one of the great things about this software is it has a slicer built in, so I don't have to worry about any of that. And this new software, compared to the old Definia, shows you the um, print bed platform temperature and also the nozzle temperature right here. You used to have to go into a separate window, so I like that improvement. It's easier to keep the track of it. To get going, all you had to do was come in and set the, uh, the bed to warm up. Since I use ABS, so that's really important. And I found I was able to set presets for temperature here in the material section. So I have a one called DW1 where I turn down the nozzle temperature to 245 and that makes the parts print better to me. I, it actually makes it easier to remove the uh, support material. So that's very important since I print hundreds of parts and uh, it can take a long time to get everything sort of manually cleaned up. So once you've got that bed warmed up, as you can see, it needs to be around 80 to 90 degrees uh, centigrade. And then you go into the print and you have a few more options. You can select layer thickness, you can select infill density, you can select the quality, which is just the speed of the print, and then you have a few other options for support material and, and things like that. So it's pretty straightforward, but I think by tweaking those, I found over, over time of all the different prints I've done, just tweaking those a little bit can make a huge difference. So you have to kind of experiment and find what really works for you. I know based on a couple of the prints that I've done for this, they have been just a little different than the other printers, but not in a significant way, just sort of maybe a little tighter fit for some of the parts, so I can account for that in other ways. But overall, I've been very happy, and everything is super easy to use. To get started with the printer, I did a, a test first. As you might imagine, I did something small. I did this little robot head, and I'm very, very happy with the quality of it. It's super smooth. And I used the newer, higher resolution of 100 microns. My old printers can only do 150. And I didn't know if it would really make that big of a difference. I've heard conflicting reports from people that it doesn't make that much of a difference, but I will tell you it does. It's very, very nice. After that, I wanted to see if it could do big jobs without warping or pulling up, so I printed these ABS tires. Uh, this is about the exact size of my old platform so I could never have printed all of these and it took about 11 and a half hours I think I just let it go overnight and they came out absolutely perfect I was very happy so that really improves my productivity overnight and because again of the HEPA filtration it doesn't stink when I come in the, in the morning or anything like that and the final test I did was to do some really fine objects I have these little uh, 
lightning bolts that I'm doing for a special project and they came out beautiful. I did this face which is, I don't know if it'll focus or not, but uh, it's one of my Mechanaut heads. This is the Explorer done in some other colors and the resolution is just great on that face. It came out so much clearer than it ever did before on any of the others. So I know once I do the smoothing process with acetone on this, it's going to be gorgeous and that really makes me happy. I'm sure my fans will be happy about that too. Well, this concludes my unboxing and sort of initial review of the Affinia 800 Plus. Compared to the other machines, the 480 and 479, which I've been running for two and three years respectively, this new machine, even though it didn't sound like a huge improvement on paper, it actually is a lot better. The new resolution, the filtration, the enclosure, the added features of uh, just, you know, Wi-Fi is huge, especially my studio is sort of cluttered. I mean, you could probably tell before from some of the glimpses you saw in the video, but it's a mess in here. I just have too much going on. So if I can put this printer wherever I want, that makes it big for me too, to be able to sort of organize and optimize better. But I do, after having used this for a week, really recommend this printer now. The quality is perfect, in, in my opinion. I haven't seen in person a printer that does a better job. They might exist, but I haven't seen them. And the price point for this, which is under $2,000, is perfect for somebody like me who just can't afford a huge price tag. Um, I think that covers everything. You know, if you have questions, I'm going to have this posted on YouTube. Just leave comments and I'll see if I can answer them for you. Or you can always contact Affinia, check out their website and, you know, give them some business. They've been really great to me. Their customer service has been fantastic. And uh, Zach over there is great. Their online presence has always been really friendly and, you know, supportive helping me share my images on Instagram and Twitter, where I go by at Mechazone, by the way. So check me out and check them out. And hopefully, if you get an Affinia, you'll like it as much as I do. Thanks a lot.